Amen. And it shall come to pass, and it shall happen in that day, before they call, God said, I will answer them, and while they're yet speaking, I will hear them. Amen. I want to speak on this subject today. What's hindering your prayers? What's hindering? What's blocking? What's stopping? What's, what's preventing your prayers? You may be seated from coming to pass. What's holding God back for operating in your life? Amen. What's hindering your prayers? This is going to be a blessed word. We talked about, I've been talking about discerning the voice of God and knowing his voice and also discerning and knowing when it's the voice of the devil. Because God said in his word that my sheep know my voice and a stranger, he would not follow. Amen. It's one thing to hear God's voice, but it's another thing to receive answers once you hear his voice. Amen. How many of you today want to really get your prayers answered? Am I the only one? I'm, I'm serious. When I, I pray, I'm serious. When I'm going through things in life, I really want God not just to hear me, but to answer me. He says in, in Jeremiah 33, 3, he said, call unto me and I'll, I'll, I'll answer you and I'll show you great and mighty things that you know not. And it's too many scriptures in the Bible talks about, amen, that God want to answer us, amen. In Matthew 77, it talks about, ask you shall receive, seek you will find, and knock the door will be open. Everyone ask, receive it. Everyone seek it, find it. Everyone knock, the door is open unto them. Listen, not all these scriptures here, amen. I'm just kind of like giving you a little background. God really want to answer our prayers, but it's some things in our life. That's hindering or stopping God from operating. Amen? And I'm always talk about my, my, my wife. I always talk about us being married. But this month we'll be celebrating uh, 34 years of being married. And I think that's a blessing. Amen? Because a lot of folks ain't even making it 34 months. Some ain't even making it 34 days. <laughs> Amen? But, but uh, we've been married this year. This year will make 34 years, and CJ will be 34. And, uh, and it's a blessing. The length of years and quality time that we spent together, and I wrote this down. It's so good here. And this is what God is saying that we didn't spend together. Sometimes before I get something out, she already know what I'm saying. I'm going somewhere with this. And the same thing, vice versa, before... She get something out. I already know what she, she's going to be saying. Have that ever happened to you? Amen. 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 And it comes from the length and the quality of time you spend with that individual. And this is what God is saying here today. He said, before you call our answer, and everybody here should have a relationship with God, it should be so tight, so connected, so close. That God's saying that, that I want to do this here in your life before you can even ask me or something. It had already showed up at your door. Amen? This is the type of relationship God wants us to have with him. But it comes from spending time with him. You can't just come here on Sunday and open your Bible and expect for God to answer you. It's, it's private time that you put in. Amen? Time when nobody see you shouting. Time nobody see you worshiping God. The best worship is not in here. The best worship is in your car. And it's at home. Amen? And listen what he said. He, amen. He's saying here, when you're so connected to me, he's saying, while you're yet speaking, I hear you. I won't put you on hold. I won't send you a text message saying I'll get back with you later. <laughs> Amen. But, but I'm going to hear your request while you're yet talking. Look, look at prayer today. Amen. That God said, because of your relationship is so close to me, before you can even get it out, I answer you. Amen. Because he's not too busy that he'll get back with us later when we got the right relationship with him. 
and I wrote this point down. The problem is, and the reason why God ain't answering us, because we've been calling folks that can't help us. Oh, this good today. How are they going to help you with your marriage? And they hadn't been married. And then if they are married, they got more problems than you. How are they going to help you raise your children when their children is hard-headed and ain't doing what's right? And this is the problem, what's going on. People trying to help you out when they need help. How are they going to help you find a job and they looking for a job? <laughs> and the church is quiet today because this is the truth. How are people going to help you when they can't help themselves? Amen? Stop running to folks that just want to know your business but don't have the resources to help you. And they answered him not a word. People can't help. And, and this is why we waste so much of our time and our effort. We run into people that can't help us. And most of the time, watch this. I'm going to give you the truth and you're going to know it today. The only reason why they trying to act like they're going to help you because they just want to get in your business. And you call them busybodies. Hallelujah. In other folks' business. They just want to know what's going on in your home. But don't have no resources or no way of, of helping you out. They just trying to find out what's going on. Just so they can spread it. Amen. Call busy bodies. Amen. But God said, listen, man, what he said. You, do you know what? And, and I, I, this is so good. But I have a pastor, Apostle Thrash, that I call up at times. We share each other, our hearts with each other. We talk to each other. But if I'm going through something, do you know it's a direct insult to God if I call him before I call God? It's an insult to God. I mean, the first person you should call on when you got a problem is not your pastor. I knew the church would be quiet. But if there be any sick among for you, let them call the elders of the church. I know what the scripture said. But I'm going to call God before I call anybody else. Because if you call him, he got an answer for you. Amen? It's a direct insult. So, so listen at here. But it's some things that's him in our prayer. And this here is it, it, point number one. I kind of like talked about this before. But I went, God told me to go back to this in Isaiah. And the first thing that, that, that would stop our prayers to, from being answered, and y'all really need to get this. I'm going to got a list of them. But the first one is sinful behavior. It's not, watch this, sin simply means to miss the mark. It means to get off track. It means to get off the base. That's all sin. But when I say sin for behavior, that means iniquity. Iniquity is sin that you practice. You practice it. You practice it how to live in adultery and fornicate. You practice it how to lie. You practice it how to steal. And anything you practice, you get you get better at. This is premature sin. And this is what's holding up your prayers. You practicing sin. It then became a lifestyle now. And you're wondering why God is not hearing you. Amen. Okay, let's go. Let's, let's look at the scripture so we can see it. Amen. I wrote down the script. In, 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 in Isaiah 59, 1 and 2, I don't want to just come. I'm going to do some teaching this morning. We hadn't had Bible study. Amen. Doug, Doug, we're going to have Bible study today. In Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2, watch this here. The Lord's hand, Isaiah 59, 1 and 2, watch this. Behold, the Lord's hand, behold, the Lord's hand is not short that it cannot do what? That's it? Oh, oh, oh it ain't on. Behold, the Lord's hand is not short that it cannot say. Neither is his ear heavy 
I want y'all to see. Somebody you want to read that, that he cannot hear you. But he said, because of your what? Inequities. Inequities is sin that you practice over and over again. And, and read on. Watch the rest of this. Read. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Okay. Neither his ear heavy uh -huh. that it cannot hear. Read. For your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Uh huh. And your sins have hid his face from you that he would not hear. That he would not do what? Hear. He would not do what? Hear. He would not hear you. This hindering your prayers because of sin that you practice in. You're doing it over and over again. And it became a lifestyle now. Now you done got so comfortable with doing it. You're doing it around people now. You used to didn't do it around. You cussing now. Come on now. And you used to, you used certain people you wouldn't cuss around. Now you done got so comfortable with it. You don't have no restraints now. No temperance, no self-control now. You, you living wild and loose now. You don't put anything on Facebook. It was a time you had some discipline in your life. But, but since COVID, now church shut down now. Amen. Now you done, now you're making excuses. Now you're doing all these sins now. And then it became iniquity. It used to affect you. Now it don't affect you no more. Oh, Jesus. And he said, I'm not, I can't hear you. I want to hear you. I want to answer you. I want to do something in your life. But you're doing things you ought not be doing. You know shacking up is a sin. I knew y'all were going to get a little quiet. That's okay. See, that's why I ain't no anointing in church. That's why ain't nothing flowing in church. That's why folks ain't being healed. That's why folks ain't being delivered. Because the church became polluted because we condone in sin now. See, when I talk about sin, the church get quiet. I'm talking about prosperity. Everybody jump to even. Hallelujah. But God is not going to bless no mess. I done said it over and over again. Come out from among them. Be ye separate, said the Lord. Touch not the unclean things. And I receive you unto myself. The wages of sin. You paying to go to hell and don't even know it. Oh, Jesus Christ. The wages. He said, because of your iniquities, you didn't hear this face from me. Now God won't hear me. He used to hear me pray, but now he's not hearing me. He kind of separated now. Do you know what? When you're real close to somebody, when they get out of fellowship, you know it. Even in a relationship. And that's what God said. You're out of fellowship with me now. Because of your iniquities. Sin, iniquity, means to, to, to practice sin. And not only that, it's premeditated sin. You know what premeditated sin is? I'm going on. I know y'all said pastor going on. But there's so much juice in there. so much meat in there. Premeditated sin, you done already planned it out. You, you already got the hotel room. You got the roses on the bed. You got the shampoo, the champagne on the bed. You got it, got it, got the spray. Got it already looking good because you done premeditated that. And next thing you know, you fall into it. See, this means watch this here. It means here. It means to to slip in it, to fall in it, to lay in it, to wallow in it, to condone it, to endorse it. That's what iniquity is. Because it then became a lifestyle now. Hallelujah. Okay. The next script is 6, six, six and 18. It means hid, hidden iniquity in your heart. It means to hide things in your heart. When you got sin, hid iniquity in your heart. Watch this here. We're going to see it. 6, six and, and 18. Hidden iniquity in the heart. If you ignore it or overlook it, read. Is that Psalm 66 and 18? Oh, I'm sorry. Psalm 66 and 18. I want y'all to see it. Okay. If I hide, if I hide iniquity in my heart, he would not hear me. I, I want y'all to see it, though. I don't want to just 
quote it. Come and hear. Is, is that Psalm 66 and 18? Uh, you, you're going to get that. Keep on driving. If come I regard on, come on. Iniquity. Use the GPS in here as the Holy Ghost and he'll guide you right. If I regard iniquity in my heart. If I regard, if I disregard, if I overlook it, if I ignore it, if I act like it don't exist, read. The Lord would not hear me. Huh? The, the Lord would not what? Hear me. If I hide something in my heart, God ain't going to hear me. I, I, I want God to answer my prayer. God said, I want to do it in your life, but you got some things that's hidden in your heart. You come to church, you shout. Over your sin, and I ain't hearing you because you got something hid. Oh my God. Do y'all know what, what it means to hide something, right? It means to cover it up, put it away, or act like it don't exist. Amen. And everybody in here got something hid. If I ask everybody right now to, to empty your, pilot, your pockets, your wallet, and your purses, and to empty it out right now. Everybody got some on them that you don't want the person sitting by you to know you got. Some of you got guns. Don't make me name it now. Some of you got knives, switchblades. Come on. Some of your pack, you're loaded right now. He, he, if I had one of those things that you know before you came to church and Gully was standing there and he was Beep, 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 beep. Everybody got some heat on them. And we got things we, we, we don't know. We don't want other folks to know. Now, let me go a little deeper with that. See, because the spiritual folks say, well, I ain't carrying that. I, I don't have nothing on me. But watch this. Here. See, sometimes you can have somebody's phone number here in your phone. You say it's brother Joe, but it's when it's sister Judy. Ooh, we driving today. Look at, look at some of y'all with y'all cell phones. Ooh, ooh. See, see, you hide things in your heart. See, see, listen, and the only way God can hear us, and I, and I, I used to do that. I used to, come, I used to come to church. I had stuff here. I ain't want nobody to know. I ain't want my pastor to know. I ain't want nobody else to know. And I just used to think I could just shout over my sin and shout over my iniquity, but I couldn't do it because God wasn't hearing my prayer, and I wanted God to answer me. So, and this is what God's saying. If you got something on you today, you can come clean. You got to clean out your pockets, clean out your pocketbook, your purses. You got to get rid of that switchblade. You got to get rid of that gun. Oh, not the gun. Yes, the metal detector. Detective. Get rid of somebody. Uh oh, why y'all laughing today? You must got something on you today. See, see, but, but, but with God, listen, y'all, you can get away with it at the football game. And you might bypass it, but when you come to church, no God know you got it on you. And the best way to get delivered is to come clean before God. Amen. Simple. If I hide iniquity in my heart, what it says, He would not do what? He would not heal. Amen. All right. Look at all the cover girls. <laughs> and the men is the private eye. I, ain't, I don't have lust in my eye. <laughs> See, God ain't going to heal us until we come clean. You know, I had a lot of this stuff I dealt with in my life. Amen? But you got to come clean before God. Amen? Okay, let's go on. Say, go on, Pastor. I'm going on. Okay, I'm going on. Okay, the next point is, first... Peter 3 and 7 is marital conflict. Marital conflict. When there's a conflict in your marriage, God ain't hearing you. I'm going to see it here. Okay. Marital conflict. Likewise. Likewise. Come ye on. husbands. Uh huh. Dwell with them according to knowledge. Dwell with your what? Your wife according to what? Knowledge. Dwell with them according to knowledge. Read. Giving honor unto the wife. 
get what, what, so I give honor or reverence to my wife. Read. But as he, unto the weaker vessel. As unto what? The weaker vessel. They are emotional. Remember I said that? They are emotional. Women are emotional by nature. One minute they're hot, one minute they're cold. One minute roll the window, roll the window down. One minute to drive up, speed up, slow down. You remember I said all that? Because she's a woman. Come on, hot spells. Cold spells. And sometimes, watch this, it leaves the man confused. He don't know what to do. He want to please her. He want to dwell with her according to knowledge. But sometimes we just picking on the women. Sometimes they're hard to understand. We got certain, certain men, but most time it with most women. Yeah, we got a few men, but most time it with women. And listen, why do you think the scripture say, dwell with Sister Coca according to knowledge? Let me bring it home today. That's why the scripture say it. Like until the week of vessel. See, watch this. See, sometimes it takes a woman to say something. Really, it shouldn't have took them but a minute, but it took them 30 minutes. Boy, y'all quiet today. Look at that. You see, because I'm telling the truth. Because they got, they, they got to express. They got to go all, oh, come on, in detail. They got to let you know everything. Else. See, but, but you know what? See, I learned how to get in my wife's world. Learn how to get in the world. So when she's saying something with her, I said, What? <laughs> get out of here. Shut your mouth, left hand. <laughs> what you say, girl? But y'all better listen to me. I, I'm getting into her world. I had to learn to dwell with her according to knowledge. I had to learn, amen, about, amen, the, 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 the property brothers. Come on, y'all. Y'all hear me today? We sit there and look at, look at that crib. Why they look bad? Oh, oh that's bad. That's bad. I'm dwelling with her according to what knowledge. I'm getting in her world. I'm just looking at stuff. And time we, sometimes we having a conversation. And a woman sees she go more in detail because she got to express herself. And that man just ready to get it over with, cut. I'm dwelling with her according to knowledge. And not only that, but watch this. She dwell with me. See, I was trying to go there, but she was trying to get ahead of me. And she dwelling with me according to knowledge, too. Because when the football game, come on, come on, y'all. And she ain't going to show up with a Washington Redskin outfit on, or shirt on, when the Dallas Cowboys is playing. Oh, right, she got to get out of here. Just like I dwell, just like she dwell with me according to knowledge, I gotta dwell with her according to knowledge, vice versa. Yeah. Amen. So not only that, I get in her world, she get in my world too. Come on, y'all. That, see, that's what love is. Love means you sacrifice, you do things you don't normally do. One time she went to a baby shower, and I shared this before. Next thing you know, she had a baby shower, asked me to go with her. I ended up with a ball in my mouth at a baby shower. I'm like, what I'm doing with this ball in my mouth? Because I love her. And most time, when you see Angel, you see Cole. When you see First Lady, you see Pastor We, Because, watch this, because we're growing together. And if somebody said, well, I saw Pastor Coco over there at this woman. Uh-uh, she knew it because I was with her at that time. He said this here. See, when you dwell with her, we dwell with each other. According to knowledge, our prayers won't be hindered. So God will answer my prayer. Watch this, man. I'm finna share something with you. It's gonna be hard to swallow. See, sometimes you gotta be wrong when you're right. I had to shout behind that. I had to get me a little praise on. And that's hard to do at times. See, because I found out. See, because if I'm right and she wrong, God going to deal with her. 
and show her But, but we don't want to do it. We want to quit and give up. Mm -mm. I, I'm, I'm right. I wear the pants. I'm the man. But if you're right, you wear the pants, you wear the man. How come you ain't handling all your responsibilities if you're the man and wear the pants? Uh-huh. You see, because we want to be the head at our convenience. But, but what if she run to you? Oh, I got this power bill. It's $500. Oh, you better go on. Well with them, my God. The knowledge that my prayers, see, my prayers are never hindered because of that. Because we've been living, like I said, I've been married 34 years now. And I'm going to always keep things at peace with her. Let me share something else. I'm going now. Do you know what? I know how to head off an argument before it starts. I knew I could have one witness. Thank you. God bless you. See, because. Because sometimes you can feel the vibe when it get ready to come, y'all. Y'all, you know when an argument coming, and you can head it off a lot of time. But a lot of times we we get so stubborn and so rebellious and so stiff necked. You see, you know, yeah, man, I love getting my prayers answered. I love before I say something, God, and I already done it. I love to live in a blessed life. Hallelujah. Before I even asked to thank God and I already worked it out. Have you ever did that? Before you even got it out, God and I already done it. Dwell with them according to knowledge that your prayers be not hindered. Okay? Oh, boy, that's good. Yeah, man, I love sitting down now. We look at house hunters and all that, man. Woo, just enjoy life now. Now, now this is my point number six here. Yeah, man, now, now. Uh, this is another one right here. Asking with the wrong motive. In James 4 and 3. See, that's the reason why a lot of your prayers ain't answered because you have the wrong motive. James 4 and 3. I told you it's a Bible study. Mo mo the, and this word motive means to, to ask the miss. Why? You have not because you ask not. And when you do ask, you ask what? With the wrong motive. Read on. Come on. Ye ask and receive not. Uh-huh. Because ye ask amiss. Y you ask amiss. Read. That ye may consume it upon your lust. Uh huh. So you're just trying to fulfill your lust. That's why I ain't answering your prayer. Why you want God to bless you with the 10 bedroom house when you ain't gonna bring the homeless in? You're not kingdom minded. Or you're not doing something to help them. Why you want God to bless you with the big car, the, the Mercedes, or the Lamborghini, or the Porsche when you ain't picking nobody up for church? See, God only bless those who are blessing the others. You don't get blessed just to house you. And most of us want to consume it just so we can look good. We want to come to church and shout, want everybody to see our outfit. <laughs> we got the Marlin shout now. <laughs> See, won't, won't folks to see what you got. Man, and I used to live a life like that. I, I always, at one time, I wanted somebody to want to get something to show it out. Well, man, I don't even live like that now. Man, when you get a certain age and you grow up in God, a lot of that stuff don't even count no more. It becomes irrelevant now. Thank God I got it, but watch this here. I'm more happy now. I got the peace of God now. I'm more happy now. I got a better relationship with God. I'm more happy now when I can come home in peace and me and Angie don't fight an orca. I'm blessed right there. So, so he said, you have not because you act to consume it upon your own lust. And that's why you don't have because you got lust in your heart. And I ain't talking about just lusting after men and women, but you lusting after things. Hallelujah. Even compare now our hair and stuff now, our hair and my hair and all this. And that's how we live now. Because we're living in a world like that now, man. And I don't, I don't put nothing past. It's good. I love to see my wife go out and look good. And I love to see y'all looking good because you all look good when you represent the kingdom of God. You all, come on y'all, you all to be fine and you got all that and, and 
And a man ought to look good. We ought to look good because we represent God. But you shouldn't be so in it till you get stuck on yourself. When you don't know how to talk to people, when you don't know how to treat people, and you think you all that on a bag of chips and you ain't nothing but a peanut. <laughs> Hallelujah. God wants us to look good. So many. See, 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 why do you want what you want? You ever thought about that? Why you want what you want? And some of us even act like we can't function unless we got a man in our life. All the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies. Uh, 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 uh. Because you ain't married don't mean something wrong with you. A man don't bring completion in your life. Sometimes he bring misery and pain. Y'all better hear me today. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank God if you do have somebody in your life. But that don't mean something wrong with you because you can't find nobody. Hallelujah. Man, when I get somebody my wife, that, that in my life, you got to make sure you get the right person. I don't know about y'all, but I can do bad all by myself. I don't need no extra help in doing bad. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To consume it upon your own lust. That's the reason why you want it. Hallelujah. You got to have it. And anything you weren't born with, you ain't got to have it. Hallelujah. You know what blessed me? And I see Mother Tate back there. Mother Tate just is happy, content with life, and she keep a big smile on her face. Every time you see her, she's like this. Even when she was a crossing guard, I saw her out there on Ocean Road. She just happy. Everybody come by. She, they, they blow their horn out because everybody knows she's so sweet, so happy. She happy all the time. And I said, and she don't have a man in her life. But what she was saying is, I'm complete without the man. And a, and a man don't bring me joy. A man don't bring me peace. A man don't bring me happiness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just as happy as she want to be coming to church, shouting and dancing. And, uh, she come up here and get a praise on in a minute. You got to learn how, and I wrote this down, you got to learn how to enjoy yourself before somebody else enjoy you. You got to learn how to be happy by yourself because another person don't make you happy. Oh, Jesus Christ. Everything I got bring glory to God. I'm serious. Everything I got, bring, if it ain't bringing glory to God, devil, you can have it. I don't want it. Everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even our wife, oh, look at her, that glory right there. Amen. Everything you got, amen. Now, watch this here. Now, 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 point number five is good here. Amen. It's praying the opposite of God's will for your life. 1 John 5, 14 and 15. 1 John 5 and 14. Let's just deal with 5, 14. And this is the confidence. Praying the opposite of God's will. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That word confidence, it means assurance. It means guaranteed results that I have in God. Read. That if we ask anything according to his will. If I ask anything according to his will, his will is his what? Come on, we talked about this. His word is his will. His will is his word. So if I pray according to his will, watch this here, read. He heareth us. He heareth us when I pray according to his will. So when I pray word, I pray will. Got it? So if I ask anything according to his will, he heareth me. So the reason why God is not hearing you, because you ain't praying according to his will. Amen? Did he say ask for money? That's what we pray for. Oh, God, bless me, God, I need to hit the light on. And some, of you, some folk that got so superstitious, I call a scripture out, they writing it down. I'm going to play them balls. You can play the power balls all you want. You ain't going to win. Because God ain't in no superstitious. Give me a three. It's a one. And he said zero. Malachi three and ten. Malachi three and ten. I know I'm going to win. You ain't going to 
going to win nothing. Amen? Yeah, let me give you Malachi 3 and 10. Bring all the tithes. If you want to win, you can win every week to the storehouse that they be meet in my house and prove me here with this Lord. See, why I won't open up the very window of hell. Now, I pull you out of blessing. You won't have room to receive. And just in case the devil get on your nerve, I will rebuke the devour for your sake. Neither shall he destroy the fruit of the ground. Neither shall your vine cast your fruit before time. Said the Lord of hosts. Preach with me today. Hallelujah. I think it will. It's real, y'all. God ain't in that superstition stuff. Hallelujah. He gives us a method. He gives us strategy. He gives us a way. Amen. Okay. All right. Now, this is the final one here. And let me tell you something else. And also praying in God's will. I have to say this here. You don't pray for God to get back at your enemies. What is good today? Amen. I pray for my enemies. Lord, forgive them. They know not what they do. Because if they know what they were doing, they wouldn't do what they do. Because you said, touch not your anointing. Do your prophet no harm. I pray for them that despitefully use me. I bless them that curse me. I do good to them that hate me. I live by those principles. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. And, and let me share something else. Let me go on since I went there. Amen. You can't pray for somebody to get a divorce. Because that's against God's will. Oh, y'all quiet today, church. That's somebody else's wife. That's somebody, come on, y'all, that's somebody else. You pray, oh, Lord, let them break up in the name of Jesus. Let them break up. That's supposed to be my husband. Hallelujah. But we do that, though. I'm serious. And, and I'm going to tell you what, and if they do break up and you get them, it ain't going to last. Let me give myself a hand clap behind that. You praying against God's will for your life. God don't make no mistake. You the one married them, now you trying to get rid of them. Stop praying against people marriage and whatever. I want, I want something to happen. That's just like, oh, I want something to happen. This is the go. Ooh, that's something else. Cause that's how I can get past the cold. See, I'm tell you something. I mean, before I got married, a lot of women would chase me. But that was only one that God ordained for me. Only that, that man, there was some guys coming out to her too. They were running behind her. But see, God has the perfect one for your life. But you got to wait and be patient and wait on God and don't marry out of your flesh just to get your lust satisfied. Because when it's over with, guess what? You still, it's empty on the inside. And let me say this, anyway, they can be good in the bed, but messed up in the head. I don't want no psycho, I can't deal with no Bipolar, I can't deal with no schizophrenic. You don't know what you got from one day to the next day. You don't know if they're in or they are. I don't need nobody standing up talking to pots and pans. shall become a fool, but he that walketh with the wise shall become wiser. A companion of fools shall be destroyed. So you hang with a fool long enough you become foolish. Because there's a foolish anointing on that person. <laughs> Let me 
she had some with Joe. Joe messed up. He thought he had the wife left. And she, when he started going through all that, and she said, Why well, should he, he got done? You might as well curse God and die. He said, Guess what? He said, You talk like a foolish woman. Fool, you talk fool. You think I'm a curse to God that He didn't bless me and everything I got now, who I am now, and what God has done in my life. Just because I'm going through this, you looking at me, I look bad. Yeah, I might look bad today, but watch me tomorrow. Watch me in a few weeks. I know things look bad right now, but just watch me come out of this here. Watch God bring me out of this mess. Watch God do something in my life. I want you to keep looking at me. Look at your name. Just keep looking at me. So just keep your eyes on me. I know it look bad. I know it look ragged. I know it messed up. But keep on looking at me. Watch me a couple of weeks from now. Watch me next month. Watch me in the next couple of days. Watch me. Keep your eyes on me. Uh -huh. What you're looking at now is just temporary. I don't know who I'm talking to today. What you going through is just temporary. But watch me. Watch me, so they, they thought they were going to kill you, but look at you, you still here today. They thought what you done went through, that it was over with. But look at you now, you still anointed, still got a smile on your face, still getting your hair do, still getting your pedicure, your manicure, you still look good. Look at your neighbor and say, just keep watching me. Say, just keep watching me. I believe God is going to blow some minds. Just keep watching me. I believe God is going to leave your enemy speechless. Just keep watching me. God said, I'm going to mess the doctors up. I'm going to mess up the report. Just keep watching me. Keep watching me. Hallelujah. They probably be talking about you, not making fun of you right now. But they keep watching you, apostle. Hallelujah. This word for you today. Just keep watching you. God is about to raise you up. Just keep watching me. Everything you done went through, hallelujah. God is going to raise you up in the midst of your enemy. Even the one said, I'll never go nowhere. I'll never prosper. Be nobody. But God said that the vision is going to speak and it won't lie. But wait on it. Though it may tarry, it shall surely come. Woo, Jesus, keep watching me. Hallelujah. Somebody gonna go and get a new wig. I don't know who I'm talking to today. But just, just keep watching me. Somebody gonna show up with something next Sunday. Oh, gee, who I'm talking to today. You're gonna show up. Look at your neighbor and say, just watch me a couple more months. Just watch me. Just next week, just watch me. Watch how I rise up again. Just watch me. Watch me walk in my healing. Watch me walk in prosperity. Watch me walk in my deliverance. I want you to just watch me, but I want you to watch my children too. Because they talked about them. Said so they'll never get saved and they'll never go nowhere in life. But the devil is alive. Keep watching it. Look at your neighbor and say, you about to go live. And everything they said about you, I send it to the pits of hell right now. Hallelujah. Just keep watching my church. Just watch my family. Just watch me. What you say, though? Watch the you. Say, keep looking at them. Say, keep looking at them. Holly, they might get drunk, get smoking, and get high right now. But God said, keep looking at them. When you train up a child in the way that he should. Watch them. Watch them get their degrees. Watch them get their education. Watch them. Let's keep watching. Watch them. They somebody going to Boston. I don't know who I'm talking But keep looking at them. Watch. See, you gotta stop judging what you see today. Stop looking at based on the things they've done in their past. Hallelujah. 
because God is going to do a new thing. He's going to raise them up. Let me prophesy to your children right now. And I command every devil to let them go right now in the name of Jesus. And I speak to their spirit right now. They're going to be kings, doctors, lawyers. Go ahead and prophesy. I think I will. R-A-N's. Hallelujah, doctors. Keep watching my children. Keep watching my seed. I know they're in trouble. I know they're in jail. But it don't matter. God is their bail to their jail. Who I'm talking to that guy. Keep watching them. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Keep watching them. They call them crazy and ignorant. It'll never be nobody. You'll be just like your dad. Uh, they're going to be like their dad in heaven. Keep watching them. Hallelujah. Well, I don't know who that word for the day. Look at your neighbor and say, that word for me. Say, that prophetic word is for me. And say, I'm believing God. That is going to be a turnaround in my life. I'm believing God that my children are going to turn around. My home going to turn around. My family going to turn around. My life going to turn around. My finances is going to turn around. Everything that's attached to me is about to turn. I wish I had about seven or eight with it. Everything that's connected to me Turn it around, God. Turn it around, God. Turn it around, God. What the devil meant for evil, God meant it for your good. And we know all things work together. This for your children. This for your home. This for your marriage. This for what the devil said. This is what your enemy said. This is what they said about him. This is what they said about you. Look at your name and say, I'm about to receive a turnaround anointing. I'm about to receive a turnaround anointing. I'm about to receive it. Go ahead and turn around if you believe it. Go ahead and turn around if you believe it. Make the devil out of a lie. Make your enemies out of a lie. Make what they said out of a lie. You'll never go nowhere. You'll never be nothing. to tell you just like he did it back then he's gonna do it again look at your neighbor and say you talking about me I've been going through a struggle I've been going through pain I've been in a situation I've been praying I've been believing God but I believe if he done it back then he can do it again same God then same God now Open your mouth and say, do it again. Tell God to do it to me one more time. Do it to me one more time. I need a breakthrough. I need a healing. I need some deliverance. God do it!
listen. I want y'all to speak this in the spirit. I want y'all to speak this in the spirit. This is heavy in my heart, but I feel a breakthrough in this place. On behalf of your children, you've been praying for, I want you to say right now, open your mouth and say this. Say, devil, I command you to lose my children. Devil, I command you to lose my children. 